the Newbury Arts Prize podcast, recorded on the 22nd of May, 2020. Well, this is one of the most magical places, certainly in my world. This morning we've got uh, the mist just rolling out of the, the valleys down below here. And uh, it's where I've grown up. I'm stood on top of Egerton, which is an old hill fort. Behind me is the town of Bridport, um, where Newbury, he wasn't actually born there. He moved into Bridport with his family at the age of three uh, from Devon. But it's certainly where he grew up. It's where he then enrolled into uh, the Bridport Grammar School and later became a teacher. He was actually a qualified teacher by the age of 15. So he was actually teaching art and uh, a whole range of subjects in the, uh, the syllabus at the time to students who were a little bit younger than himself. But regardless, he went on and encouraged many artists from not only uh, around the, the, the county and the country, but from around the world to come and experience some of the inspiration that he uh, benefited from. And indeed, it is a, a magical kingdom, particularly at this time of the morning. And uh, we've got the Skylarks in the sky, duelling, just as Sergeant Troy uh, used the place to demonstrate his duelling ability to Bathsheba in the, uh, the famous film and book, Far From the Madding Crowd. In fact, it was the very hill fort where my grandfather, in the original film, drove Julie Christie to her home. And uh, then subsequently, my family were involved uh, with the remake a few years ago. And what we're going to do today is we're going to have a look in and around Bridport into some of the buildings and see some of the artwork that was painted by Newbury um, in Bridport just behind me. Um, buried in the midst, not far from the coast, Bridport nestles very safely and securely in the, the mist down below. Wherever Newbury went, he brought colour. Uh, Newbury wanted to enthuse and encourage people from all across every sector. And um, in doing so, he, he had this, well, he had this belief that everybody had an artist inside them. And that's what he wanted to draw out. He wanted to bring out everybody's perspective with open-mindedness and encourage them to paint and draw and learn new crafts. But it wasn't just the learning of these crafts. Newbury also wanted them to hone their skills, to develop their ideas, and to be able to exhibit their final works. Newbury was a brilliant, uh, brilliant character. He was very flamboyant. He was very charismatic and dynamic. He was a, he was a larger than life character. And throughout his career as a teacher, he continuously, and it's a word that I'll use over and over again, he enthused. Newbury believed that Bridport was already this centre for creative people, even though many of the industries were evolved and revolved around net making, rope making, and a lot of the textile industries that supported our naval fleet. But he knew that there was more than that. So he actually employed people, not only from the town, but in the neighbouring villages and parishes, to create this beautiful crown jewellery of the textile industry that is called passementry. And that's what the business uh, that he inherited was actually based on. It grew into an enormous empire following the great British Empire and the growth of. And so the business reached countries not only in the British Empire at the time, but beyond. So Newbury had this far reach to encourage artists not only here in Bridport, but throughout the entire world. And that's really why his influence today still stands. And 
I can only put one word to it. Astonishing. Newbury, at the age of 17, bought this enormous house that we stand in now. And he offered hospitality and the encouragement. Um, and he almost demanded artists such as Mackintosh and Cladell and Rodin and Eiffel. There were sculptors and engineers and designers and uh, painters and drawers and these creatives from all over Europe who were descending on Bridport. And the reason being, because Newbury wanted them to experience this incredible inspiration here in Bridport. And so Bridport has become, over the last, certainly the last few centuries, this, this increasing mecca for a creativity. And indeed there are within a short distance of this very building. There's a whole plethora of incredibly creative people. And that's what Newbury saw in the town. That's what, it, even though it was the home where he grew up, there was this enchanting spirit about the town that put artists at their ease and enabled them to express themselves and so Newbury was the, the instigator. He was the, the kingpin to making this all happen and all apparent and to exposing Bridport to this international stage. After a long career at the Glasgow School of Art, some, some 30 years, Newbury was tired. So he decided with his wife, Jessie, to retire to where his heart really was set, and that was Dorset. They actually moved to Corfe Castle, and this is where they bought a, a lovely little cottage and a neighbouring chapel. The chapel Newbury turned into his art studio, and it was in this studio that Newbury decided to pay back Bridport for his life and his career. And so he painted, uh, he painted pictures for the town hall and neighboring buildings. And it started off with this wonderful painting, a romance of Bridport, but it became a vocation and this, this endless conveyor belt of ideas that he expressed onto canvas. And so, he spent the remains of his retirement depicting characters and industry and the people and the sites and the countryside and the architecture of this pretty little market town here on the south coast of, of England. And that's what we see in the town hall today. It is really just a, it's an honour to be reviving the prize because the legacy that Newbury has left behind to stand the test of time for 145 years is astonishing. So we enthuse you to take part in the Newbury Arts Prize. Join the platform and enter the competition. Entries are open, the floor is yours. Good luck.